Hi, I'm Gus Issa. I'm an assistant professor at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I'll be answering the question on menin inhibition and in relapsed and refractory AML. What do the data, data tell us? And the answer is menin inhibition works. And that's the reason why leukemia physicians are excited about the latest addition to targeted therapies, um, this latest addition to targeted therapies. Uh, menin is a critical protein important for the abnormal gene expression that causes leukemia and MPM1 mutant AML and uh, leukemias with KMT2A rearrangements, previously known as MLL, and maybe some other leukemia subtypes. Menin inhibitors disrupt the binding of menin to the transcriptional machinery that causes leukemia. At this ASH meeting, Dr. Harry Erba presented data from the phase one study of the menin inhibitor from Kura Oncology, Ziftominib, and I presented data from the phase one study of Rebuminib, uh, the menin inhibitor from Syndax. Both inhibitors are showing promising clinical activity, and I'll tell you a little more about the data I have presented from the Syndax menin inhibitor. In this phase one study, at the last data cutoff, we have enrolled 68 patients with various relapsed or refractory acute leukemias, mostly AML, but also including ALL and mixed phenotype acute leukemia. 60 of the 68 patients, so the majority, had NPM1 mutations or KMT2A rearrangements, and that's because of an early amendment to the protocol that restricted eligibility to these genotypes, given the strong preclinical rationale supporting menin inhibition in these subtypes. We have enrolled both pediatric and adult patients, so the age ranged between 10-month-old and 79-year-old patients. And uh, in this phase one, we performed dose escalation in two separate arms with and without CYP3A inhibitors, given that Revuminib is a CYP3A substrate. We found promising clinical activity with the single agent oral medication. The medication is given twice a day continuously in this heavily pretreated patient population where the median uh, number of prior therapies or median number of prior lines of therapy was four and approximately half had relapsed after a stem cell transplant. The overall response rate in patients with KMT2AA or MPM1 mutant leukemia with Revuminib was 53%. And uh, complete remission and complete remission with partial hematologic recovery or CRCRH was 30%. And an impressive 78% MRD negative rate in those patients that attained CRCRH. This is the highest MRD negative rate I am aware of with any therapy in these uh, leukemia subtypes. The median duration of response was 9.1 months. Revuminib was related. The main side effects were grade three prolongation of the QT interval on EKG monitoring in 13% of the cases. All were asymptomatic and led to no complications and were managed with dose reductions. 16% of the patients had a differentiation syndrome associated with Revuminib. This is similar to other targeted therapies in uh, acute AML, such as IDH inhibitors, and it was successfully managed with steroids or hydrium. I have also presented this ASH data on the outcomes of 12 patients uh, from this cohort who received a stem cell transplant in consolidation after responding to Revuminib monotherapy. Um, and we observed durable remissions in these patients um, for of these patients have remained in remission beyond one year uh, without maintenance at the last data cut. Uh, the phase two study of Revuminib is ongoing, um, and these are pivotal studies with uh, multiple cohorts uh, for KMT2A, NPM1, or ALL uh, with a planned FDA submission based on this data. Revuminib recently received the breakthrough therapy designation from the FDA with the intent to facilitate and accelerate FDA approval based on the results of the phase two. In addition, multiple combination studies are planned with menin inhibitor. So hopefully menin inhibitors will expand the reach of targeted therapies and these difficult to treat subtypes of acute leukemia. Thank you.